Welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, we are going to find out answer of one of the most searched query on YouTube that is, is data science dying? We will try to understand what's happening in the industry and why people are searching this. And also towards the end, I'm going to tell you how can you tune your career or tune your learning so that you stay relevant in the field. Please ensure you watch this till end. First of all, guys, why people are searching these kind of things? So what I did is I went to chat GPT and I asked, please give me a Python code to build my LMS website using Flask. And this is what the tool started giving me. This looks really scary, if you ask me honestly. If you are a coder, if you are a programmer, if you have stand, if you have spent years and years together in learning coding, then this is really scary. If you generate an image from some advanced image generation model, then all your graphics or design things that you have learned as a designer in all these years, that looks little scary, the kind of images and the kind of quality some of the advanced models are generating. But here, I will limit my discussion to data science related work that tools are doing, okay? And one thing that scares me a bit is these auto ML capabilities, okay? So some of you who is not aware of what is auto ML capability, it is basically a person with zero knowledge of machine learning or data science can build a model as good as I can build with 12 years of data science experience. The person has to just upload the data in the system. Everything will be done right from data cleaning to feature engineering to choosing the best model to the deployment. Everything will be done on the click of a button. And that is where we as data scientists need to think how we can make the difference. And I'm going to talk about a couple of scenarios to make you understand what makes you special and how can you become more special and more relevant. Let's say there is a sales representative of an organization and he or she is trying to understand the different clusters or different segments of customers. Okay. He or she just goes to a auto ML tool and create different bucket of customers, bucket one, two, three, four. Now, how that person will validate the goodness of these buckets? If you ask to the tool, right? Tool will simply tell you some metric, but you and me know how a metric can be not the right picture of how the model is. For example, confusion metrics does not always tell the goodness of the model. True positive rate, false positive rate, these things can always be misleading. So when you are understanding how good your model is from the metric output of the tool, in many cases that may not give you the right picture. That is problem number one. Problem number two is suppose you get some insight, suppose you build a let's say time series forecasting model or suppose you build a recommendation system, any, any model that you build in auto ML tool. If you are not from data science background, right? What will happen is your mind will not go in multiple directions. For example, suppose you build a sales forecasting model. Now, if you don't have any data science experience, I'm talking about person who, who has no knowledge of AI ML or data science, trying to do something using some of these tools or some of these AI capabilities, right? Who will tell you that this is your sales forecast Let's go ahead and do an inventory optimization. Who will tell you that this is your sales forecast? Let's go ahead and do a campaign analytics. Who will tell you that this is your sales forecast? Let's go ahead and do a revenue optimization. This is your data on your data based on these different subject areas. I as a data scientist from my experience feel that in your case, in your particular scenario, these segments are not looking good. In your particular scenario, the forecasting may be biased. In your particular scenario, based on my previous experiences, 
I can tell you that in this domain, this kind of situation, these kind of models do not perform good. Where from you will feed that intelligence which me and you have gathered in all these years into the system. That too, up to that level of capability. That is exactly the point where you and me start making the difference. I'll give you one more example. Suppose you are sitting with your client, okay? When you work with, with your client for many number of years, let's say two years, four years, right? You develop a human to human connection, okay? And that human to human connection, when you develop, then that trust factor comes in. So if suppose you are working with any ABC XYZ retailer, okay? You tell that, hey, retailer ABC XYZ, I am seeing your data since last many years, okay? These are the things I have worked you with. I feel that on your data, this also can be done. And here are the evidences why I think so. Here are the proofs why I think so. And here is the way I can communicate you the data story in a better way. What I'm trying to tell you is the art of human to human connection number one, the soft skill of how do you create a nice data story and present it and the idea of collaboration. Okay. I give you two examples where you can just understand if you want to be that differentiator, if you want to be that person who everybody looks for, right? What are the five, six things that you should focus on being a data scientist? Remember the bottom line, guys, the person who can implement the implementer, I'm calling that person the implementer, okay? The person who can implement, we don't want you boss, okay? Because there are tools which can implement it in a faster, more efficient way, probably than you can do. Maybe you can do better, but I'm just taking a general thing here. There are tools which can write a better quality code than you can write, okay? So don't be a person who can implement things. Don't be an implementer. Be a person who can contribute in data-driven decisions. Be a person who can collaborate. Be a person who can present data stories in a nice way. Be a person who has domain knowledge. Be a person who can visualize how this will work in the production. Be a person who can suggest to client, this can work, this cannot work. Be a person who can think end to end. Okay, implementation part, obviously a small part of the story, how this will work together. Be somebody who can give client suggestions that boss, this works in retail, this kind of segmentation works. I have seen it works, it will work. And even if it doesn't work, I will do X, Y, Z, A, B, C thing and I will make it work. Okay, that confidence, that soft skill, that domain expertise, that past experience, that business understanding, that way of communication is what is going to matter. Okay, so these are the things you and me need to focus more. Obviously, implementation part, coding part, etc. is important. But the way industry is moving, right? I'm trying to give you an idea of if you want to move up the ladder, if you want to be somebody sought after, if you want to be somebody to whom people look to, right? You have to improve in these areas. What you feel about this? What you feel about advancement in AI, the new age AI capabilities? Please comment down what you think are the relevant uh, skill sets we should be looking at. Please comment down. These are my own experiences with a thought of sharing with you. And any feedback, any comments are always welcome. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, wherever you are. Stay safe and take care.